Hello and welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV. And in this episode, we're continuing our series on World War II small arms. And with me here is the author of this book, Shooting World War II Small Arms, Mike Venturino. And we have a Sten well, we gun. Have is a Sten gun Mark II. Uh, the British made several marks of it, from Mark I to Mark IV or V. The Mark II were the most used in World War II. Okay. And they made two million Mark IIs. Wow. At, at the height of their production, they were producing 20000 a week, and the cost to the British government was $10.99. <laughs> and the gun looks that way. Yeah, it's, it kind of does. Yeah, it's spot welded, cheaply made, but it worked. That was important. That's the most important thing, yeah. so long as it works, right? It worked. Uh, it fired a 32-round magazine like the German MP40. But the magazine, as you notice, comes in the side. Yeah, and that a was a different. benefit. In combat, you could get low, where the other magazines, when they're on the bottom, that's as low as you get. Oh. See? So this was a, a good benefit. Also, it's lightweight. is a great benefit. It only weighs six and a half pounds. Wow. You know, the Thompson weighed twice that much. Uh, the MP40 weighed eight and a half pounds to the six and a half pounds. So the British were pretty happy to, pretty to light. get this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine if you're lugging it around all day, you really appreciate every cut pound you can get. Yeah. It must have gone against the British grain to make it for the German 9 millimeter cartridge, the 9 millimeter Parabellum. But that was a smart move. They drop these into France by the thousand. They take down into three basic pieces. They crated them up, and then they parachuted them into France. And the, a quantity of ammunition, and then, the, of course, the French resistance could capture German 9 millimeter ammunition, worked just fine in this. So it was a very utilitarian gun, but it was a very good gun. And very simple to manufacture, obviously, given that price point. Yes. So, again, it's probably pretty simple to care for, no special notes or anything? No special notes. You can pull the wire butt stock down. You press that in, pull the wire butt stock down, take the bolt out, clean the barrel from the rear end, which is always good That's for the nice. muzzle crown, mm -hmm. uh, grease the bolt up, put it back together, and you're ready to go. Hmm. Pretty simple. Yeah. So nine millimeter, a favorite pet load for this particular firearm, or is it uh, same one as the MP40. Same one as the MP40. Five point yeah. four Winchester two thirty one and one hundred and fifteen grain full metal jacket. And it runs just fine, huh? It runs just fine. Shoots good. It's actually easy to hit with. It's about five hundred to five hundred fifty rounds per minute. Okay, so pretty pretty slow, cyclic yeah. rate. You'll see that it's easy to hit with. Okay. Now, what about cast bullets? Have you tried any cast bullets through this? or With my bad luck with them in the MP40, I just discontinued didn't, them. Didn't even bother? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you say we take this out to the range then and give it a try? You bet. Sounds good. I, I think you'll be impressed with it. I'm excited. Many factors affect rifle accuracy. The one most overlooked is your gun stock. Today's synthetic stocks are hollow and flexible and not very stable. You don't get this flex from a Boyd's hardwood gun stock, which is more rigid and stable. High speed footage also shows the flex and barrel movement you get with the plastic stock. This excess movement will affect your accuracy. Want to shoot better? Put a Boyd's hardwood gun stock on your gun. Well, all right, Mike, we got the ammo. You got the... Uh... Sten Mark II, Sten. nine millimeter. All right. There's your safety. Put the magazine in until it clicks and you're ready to fire. Pretty simple. You bet, meant to be. All right.
it is. <laughs> so we're out on the range and we just finished a long day of filming with all these awesome, awesome full autos. And we figured we'd do this uh, kind of all together like You're right. with all the full autos. So that way we kind of had some time behind each one of them and we could talk about them. We'll have individual videos on each of these awesome World War II firearms. So be sure to check out each one individually. But as far as a conclusion goes, for me, my personal favorite has to be this STG 44, MP 44, as this one's marked. Yes. It is a super cool gun. It's the first assault rifle ever made, definitively. And uh, it's a neat intermediate cartridge. It's pretty accurate in semi-auto. Gets away from you pretty quick in full auto. Oh, though. Yeah. And then, of course, you got to have the Thompson in there. And again, we'll have individual videos on all of these. But I had so much fun out here shooting these things. I learned so much just listening to Mike talk about them. And we didn't even skim the surface. If you really want to learn more about these classic, iconic, historical firearms, be sure to check out his book, Shooting World War II Small Arms. It's an awesome book with load data, tons of information on it. And Mike, I have to thank you for coming out here and doing this with us, opening up your home, your shooting shack. I have to give a special thanks to Ted Tompkins for being the uh, official gopher. Yeah, the, the gopher. gopher. The gopher. I mean, he was running back and forth, brought us lunch, brought us food. I really appreciate that, Ted. And Mike, I don't have enough good things to say about you. I really appreciate this, shooting your ammunition, your time, your guns means a lot to me. I'll tell you what, Jeremiah, I had just as much fun sharing it with you, and I'm proud to be included in this. It means a lot to me. And as for my favorite, that's the MP40. It's one of the least practical, but I saw a lot of movies in the 50s and 60s. <laughs> and they all had those, right? That's right, yeah. For sure. As a young kid, I grew up watching combat and shows like this, so getting to shoot these firearms is really a dream come true. And we got a lot of great performance out of all of them. The Nambu really surprised me with its simplicity and its accuracy. Mm -hmm. The Lewis gun did pretty good too, but as you were saying, it's not quite zeroed. That's right. Yeah. So we got to cut it a little bit of slack. But it was a <laughs> lot of fun to shoot. Great cartridges. The Sten, a simple mass-produced submachine gun mm -hmm. that worked. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with the grease gun. They put it in tanks, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. And so we got I got to learn a lot about these. Well, don't forget the M2 carbine. And the M2 carbine. What an a, awesome, accurate little rifle. If you were in a tough spot, that'd be the one to have. Probably the most practical, you were saying. Definitely. Most practical. Most practical. Well, thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. And uh, again, a special thanks to Mike and Ted Tompkins for making this all possible. Don't forget to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or personal experience with these guns, we'd love to hear about it. Be sure to leave those thoughts in the comments below. And until the next episode, we'll see you later.